All right, so here we're going to sketch this rational function. It's f of x equals 2x minus 4 over x squared minus 2x minus 8. So the first thing we can take a look at is the y-intercept. Reminder to find a y-intercept. You always set the x equal to 0. So if I plug in 0 for all of my x's, Um, we'll just end up with the constants. So we'll just on the top end up with minus 4, and on the bottom we'll end up with minus 8. So here we have minus 4 divided by minus 8. If you simplify that, you'd get 1 over 2. So my y-intercept is at 1 over 2. Next, let's find our x-intercept. Find an x-intercept, we'll set the y to 0. So we go 0 equals 2x minus 4 over x squared minus 2x minus 8. Now remember that the fraction just means divide. So here, since I'm dividing the bottom, I could undo dividing by multiplying. So if I multiply that bottom to 0, we just get 0 equals 2x minus 4, because 0 multiplied by the bottom is still 0. So from here, we just need to get the x by itself. So I'd add my 4 over, and then divide out my 2. So we end up here with an x-intercept of 4 over 2, which is 2. So next, let's take a look at our vertical asymptote. To do this, we set the denominator equal to 0. So we'll go 0 equals x squared minus 2x minus 8. Now this is a quadratic. So to solve a quadratic, remember you have to factor. So when I factor this, I'm looking for two numbers that add to get to negative 2 and multiply to get to uh, negative 8. So that would be x minus 4 and x plus 2, because they add to get to minus 2 and multiply to get to negative 8. So here we would have two vertical asymptotes. If we set the vertical asymptotes equal to 0, we'd get one of them at x equals 4 and the other one at x equals negative 2. So two vertical asymptotes. And the final thing is our horizontal asymptote. Remember there's three cases for the horizontal asymptote. Here the numerator is 1 of a power, and the denominator has a power of 2. So since the numerator is a smaller power than the denominator, that would be like case 1. And case 1, the horizontal asymptote is at the x-axis, which would have the equation y equals 0. So now we know our asymptotes and our intercepts. So now we should be able to put all of this information on a graph. So I'd like to start with my vertical asymptotes. I have a vertical asymptote at 4 and at negative 2. I have a horizontal asymptote at 0. And then I can put my x and my y intercepts on as well. So my y intercept is at half and my x-intercept is at 2. So y-intercept is at half, and my x-intercept is at 2. So now that I have my points and my asymptotes all on there, we are going to need to hit the points and hug the asymptotes. This point right here um, acts like a little doorway through your horizontal asymptote. That's again the only exception to when an asymptote can be crossed is a horizontal asymptote can be crossed if there's an x-intercept on it and then it can pass through like a little door. So for this middle section I have to hit both my points and then hug the asymptotes. So it would hug the asymptote, it would hit both points and then it would curve to hug your other asymptote. So remember that graphs have to hug asymptotes and they have to hit the points that you found. Now on the other part of our graph, we're unsure if the graph's going to be up here or down here. Um, so what we have to do is we look back at our original point or original equation. It's 2x minus 4 over x squared minus 2x minus 8. So I'm going to plug in a point on this side of minus 2. Let's try minus 3. So if I plug minus 3 in here, we get this equation. And now we're just going to calculate it. So 2 times minus 3 is minus 6. Minus 4 more means there would be a minus 10 on top. On the bottom we have 9 
plus 6 minus 8, so that would be a positive 7. So when I plug in negative 3, I get the answer negative 10 over 7. That tells me that my graph is going to be in the lower portion, because it's a negative answer, it's a negative y value. So again, that means if I'm at negative 3, the answer is negative 10 over 7. So this portion of the graph is going to hug your asymptotes down there. Again, it's down there, because when I plug in negative 3, I got a negative y value, telling me the graph is in the negative y's. Now if I try the same thing on the positive portion of the graph here by plugging in a number like 5, um, we see that we get an answer of positive 6 over 7, which means this portion of the graph would hug your asymptotes above the x-axis where the y's are positive. And that's it. That would be what this graph looks like. All right, we're going to try to graph one more. Um, so this time we're going to graph y equals x squared minus x minus 6 over top of x plus 3. And I can already tell that this one's ugly because it has a horizontal asymptote that's case 3, meaning I'm going to be graphing a slant asymptote in this question. So I'd like you to go ahead and take a minute to try to find your intercepts and your asymptotes for this question. So you can then just compare your intercepts and asymptotes to those on the board. Um, take a look at how we calculated them all, and then we're going to put them on our graph. All right, so I'm going to start with my asymptotes here. I have a vertical asymptote at negative 3. So that would be right there. And a horizontal asymptote, it's actually not horizontal, remember this is actually going to be a slanted line, at 1x minus 4. So 1x minus 4 has a y-intercept at minus 4 and a slope of 1. So this asymptote would start at minus 4 and have a slope of up 1 over 1. So it would seem something like that as you go through and graph your asymptote. Okay, so if I zoom out, it looks something like this. So we need to make sure our asymptotes do end up crossing. And now we're going to put on our intercepts. So I have a y-intercept at negative 2, and x-intercepts at 3 and negative 2. So we have a y-intercept at negative 2, and x-intercepts at 3 and negative 2. So we get something like this. Now remember, our rule is that graphs have to hit our points and hug asymptotes. So this middle section is going to be kind of parabolic as it's going to hit the points and then go and hug the asymptotes. But there's got to be another section of graph. And that other section of graph, don't draw this, but would either be here or down here. Now we have to decide where it is, but remember, we can't cross the x-intercept any more times. We already found our only two x-intercepts. So the graph cannot be up here because it would cross the x-axis, meaning we're going to have to draw the other portion of graph down below there, where it would just continue going down forever. And that would be the graph of this rational function.